So here's the example project. If we look at the projects, first of all let's look at the library that contains the transformer. And in the PCB library panel we can scroll down. Here it is. So we've created this transformer with all the windings in the actual footprint. Um, Optionally, we'd, we, this is where we'd create and run a, a, a script to check winding direction versus odd or even pad numbers, say, because in the schematic component, um, we've put the dot on every odd numbered pin. So, of course, provided these things match up, um, it, it's actually impossible to wire it up incorrectly with a, with a winding out of phase. You can see, if I go through the single layer mode, we go through the layers, we've got a sense winding on top um, and we've got our secondary, first secondary, first primary, second primary, second secondary and on the bottom layer we've got a, a sen the, the second sense winding um, f or drive winding for synchronous rectification. If I go back to the schematic you can see how those have been all connected up. Back in the PCB we've synchronize those things through the usual ECO process so you can see I've actually done all the track work according to the schematic in here. We've got our our sense windings looped through and just using some via connections there to go to the, the pads on the top layer for the uh, synchronous rectifiers. If I go out of single layer mode you can see those there. And so the whole thing's pretty much symmetric we have our input switches on on this side driving the primaries and if I just zoom out a little go into single layer mode you can see how all of that's connected up I'll just scroll through the layers there, that's our first secondary first primary then I've added to the board on the layer stack up two internal layers that aren't defined actually in the component in the library um, this is okay because the component doesn't actually contain any primitives on these layers so it's just simply going to leave the layer blank uh, but what that means is I can add layers to this later on to and as you can see here to, to link into internal connections in the winding so here I've got a center tap on the secondary going to a, a polygon on the ground plane you can also see I've used some arcs placed some arcs there and those arcs have their um, if I double click on that, bring up the properties, you can see it's a keep out, which means the actual arc will not put any copper on the board in the final Gerber outputs, but it's there as a barrier for the polygon pour. Um, so that's used to, to control the pour shape so that it's at basically at 90 degrees to any of the windings. So there should, should be relatively no um, eddy currents or anything from the transformer in that. If I go to the next layer across, I've got something similar happening on this side. I've defined a polygon to get to the center tap of the primaries. And there's our first primary with some vias uh, just joining the, the two primaries. There's the second secondary that's come through here. And you can see the pad on, this, on the uh, tr actual transformer component we've used surface mount pads on these inner layers to terminate the windings so that is the actual physical pin connection represented on the schematic and that we've just connected into that using regular track and arc objects and then a polygon fill and then some through hole vias um, that, that do two things they give a low impedance connection to the switch but they also provide heat sinking for that switch as well um, going back to the the bottom layer we've also added some keep out objects as part of the transformer now though those were actually going completely all the way around in the actual footprint but once we get here into the into the actual PCB editor one of the things we can do is go to the properties of the component and we can temporarily unlock the primitives that make up the component and that allows us to grab an individual uh, say keep out or arc and just move it a, a little bit uh, if we need to make a gap in that keep out we can easily do that so we can 
route a track in uh, to connect internally to one of the windings or do something like that we can do that very easily and then go back to the component properties for the transformer once we've done that and relock them so that we protect it and don't do anything silly by accident and you can see I've used extensively polygons on the on the other top and bottom layers to connect everything up so that that's that's connected everything up you'll note that the um, the pads themselves there's a surface mount pad right there you can see the net name assigned to the pad and the pad number pin 12 on the transformer winding but because the the wire traces are the same as or or wider diameter than the pad itself um, they just connect straight up to that and uh, all you see there is the net assignment but there is a pad there and if we, you click over that you can see it in the in the pick list um, there's the little preview in the pick list of the actual whole, whole transformer itself if, we, if I scroll out or zoom out I should say you'll see on any of these layers there's no net assigned to the primitives that make up the windings that's okay if we wanted to assign a net to those we could using uh, a command called configure physical nets but it, it, you don't actually have to do that and it's probably cleaner and easier not to do that uh, it, but what we definitely will do is do a clean all nets because what that does is that ensures that every pad or terminator that has a net assigned to it and every primitive going into that actually has the appropriate net assigned to it uh, it won't mess up or it won't assign any nets to primitives that actually belong to the part but any free primitives that connect up to those will will have that net assigned to them running a clean all nets command now I'm going to save that and just before I run design rules we'll quickly look at the design rules we have a, just to keep things very simple we have a basic clearance rule of 5 mil for anything to any other thing um, and a short circuit rule we're not allowing any short circuits we could use this as an approach as an alternative approach to using net ties with some extra slightly complicated queries here that might say in component uh, T1 for example we could say if it's in component T1 and it's between this net and that net then yes we'll allow a short circuit but that gets a little more complicated than just simply using a net tie which is a lot easier uh, which is why I'm, I'm doing it uh, in this case we also have some other pretty straightforward sort of standard rules for polygon connect style we could choose to set up different net classes or specific nets and choose to have thermal reliefs in this case I've actually disabled those rules and I've just got the one basic uh, polygon connect style rule which is a di direct connect with no thermals and that's why all of these vias and component pads are connecting in directly as you can see there there's no thermal relief on any of those and I've report all of the polygons now having set all that up we can just go straight ahead and um, I'll go to single layer mode just for a second and we'll go tools design rule check we're going to run all of the main electrical rules and component clearance rules uh, in our batch DRC and hit the, the go button and it, it gives us one warning that it failed to verify the net tie that's not a big deal that just simply means it's a net tie with multiple separate shorts instead of one one uh, copper short that may connect a lot of different nets it's it's several shorts between two different nets so uh, that's actually okay it's only a warning it's not a violation or an error per se it's just a warning and we know what we're doing so I'm happy to ignore that you'll note for all of the other important rules none of them have been violated and if I want to be really sure I can save the PCB open up the PCB panel go to the rules at the top of the PCB panel I can select the rules list and uh, from the next rule down I can go all rules and all of the enabled rules will be shown and I can scroll through the rules just hitting the down arrow on the keyboard one by one as I'm going it'll be highlighting and selecting parts that those rules apply to or objects that those rules apply to and if I were to get any violations they would show in instantly in this list down list view down here but since you know we, we can see the objects the rules are applying to but I'm not seeing any violations so I'm happy with that and it definitely works uh, pretty well